<laughs> Are you clever? Yes, no. Well, more importantly, are you Pokemon clever? Oh! Anyway, hey! I'm back! I'm the Gems, Gems Desu, and today we are gonna be looking at a video called 12 Obscure Pokemon Facts You Don't Know by Blue Boy Finn. Let's see, are you Pokemon clever? Am I Pokemon clever? Hell yeah! Let's go! Did you know Psychic Type is weak to common fears? Did you know Drowsy really? is based on a tape? Dark, Ghost, and Bug, that's actually true! I'm scared of those types. Am I Psychic? Is this true, me? You scared of these stuff? Spider Man! Paper. Oh, you did? Mm. Good. Then I'm gonna I tell you some facts about Pokemon that, but, yeah. that you actually don't know. My name is Finn, and this is not your normal fact video. Finn. I like to search out things about Pokemon that are genuinely obscure, things I doubt most Pokemon me, fans have ever amazing. heard. You probably and know if him any already, of these are new to you, you should subscribe. We're getting kind of close to 100k, which has always been a dream of mine. But anyways, let's do this. I'm sure if you've played Pokemon Crystal, you remember how after you beat the 8th gym leader, Claire, Crystal, there's an additional bit of story where you have to travel into the Dragon's Den and take a test to determine if you're worthy of the badge. After this, when leaving the Dragon's Den, Claire will then stop you and give you the TM for Dragon Breath. Well, I would like to propose a question. What if inside of the Dragon's Den, after you took the test, but before you could leave, your last Pokemon in your party ends up dying to poison damage. Do you oh, just not get the TM for Dragon true. Breath whatsoever? That's true. Well, okay. no. Actually, for some reason, you end up getting two. Upon waking up in front of the Pokemon Center, if you enter back into Claire's gym and speak to her, she will play the same dialogue line as she normally would, but then if you head back to the Dragon's Den afterwards, as soon as you land on this tile, the original cutscene will play and she will give you a second Dragon Breath ah, PM. Ah, okay. That one's actually quite mad. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> In Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on Route 225, there's a very interesting NPC that's hiding an Easter egg oh, those that I'm almost Ace positive Elite, Elite, you missed. Elite Ace Trainers. Her name is Ace Trainer Deanne. Deanne As you probably know, Cherish Pokeballs are practically ah, I love this ball. Without a this ball is one of my favorite. Ah, such a beautiful ball. Mm. Cherish Pokeballs are practically unobtainable Ooh. without a cheating device. Huh? Only capable of coming from certain events. Oh, yeah, Pokemon. yeah, yeah, that's true. Just, yeah, yeah, then, yeah. how on earth does this random trainer, Deanne, actually have a Tropius in Wait, really? the Cherish Ball? Well, uh -huh. this is not an oversight, and it's actually a nod to the first ever event Pokemon. Dis yes! Yes! Oh my days, I think I know this one. So yeah, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just so high. But yeah, in Japan, there was this show called Pokemon Sunday. One of the presenters, I think all members, TV members of that show is called Shokotan, a lady there. But yeah, I remember they were giving out a Tropius and I guess because that's an event, I, I didn't know that it was with a Cherish Ball, but yeah, I think that's why. I think that's a that's a reference, but damn, I didn't know that was him, uh, Brilliant Diamond. I'd never uh, noticed that. Attributed in a Cherish Ball, which was Shokotan's Shokotan, there you go, yeah. all the way back in 2007 as part of a campaign for an old Japan-only Pokemon-themed TV show called Pokemon Sunday. <coughs> yes! This show was the bomb. The only problem was that in it, I would only be able to see it every time I came to Japan in summertime. And this show, my God, always used to air super early, super early. I think it was 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. I'm still, too, it's 2007. I still a little baby boy, you know? I don't want to wake up early on summer holidays. But yeah, that did get me up. <gasps> Mama, it's 7 a.m. Time for Pokemon Sundays. Pokemon League and Pokemon Ruby Sapphire Gee, and Emerald, man. there's an interesting quirk with these lights that I can almost guarantee you did not know. And that is the speed of how fast they flash. Because it actually changes depending on what localization of the game oh. you have. In the 
that's actually true you know it did feel faster than the japanese one i don't remember it being that slow that felt more like leaf green or something but yeah it, it felt much japanese faster. versions they're much faster than the north american release in generation one aerodactyl was unable to learn the move earthquake but oh. later on when transferred to gold silver crystal it gains the ability to learn this move the reason this is interesting has to do with pokemon stadium if you use oh, the time on, capsule and trade an Aerodactyl with the move Earthquake back to Generation 1 and then to and Stadium, then, uh, okay, something that's interesting. very interesting will happen. Because you could only transfer Pokemon into Stadium from Red, Blue, or Yellow, Aerodactyl was technically not intended to have this move. And when used in battle, you could see an entirely unique Aerodactyl attack what animation like? for this move only. <laughs> To my research, this is the only time Aerodactyl uses this animation <laughs> in this game. And there was a point. Just one more time. Come impossible. on. Impossible. <laughs> I love it. I don't know why. In That's June so of cool. 2008, Pokemon held an event distribution for Deoxys in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. The event was held uh, at GameStops in the US don't and to remember promote this, this they handed out flyers promoting the event Pokemon. England. But for some reason on this flyer, there was a pretty huge mix-up. Where it shows the information about this Pokemon, it says the event is for Darkrai instead of Deoxys. Really? Shout out to Professor Rex, you guys should go subscribe to him by the way. Who Wait, really? How did they mess that up? Darkrai and Deoxys. I bet it was some guy eating McDonald's, you know, with so greasy hands, you know. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't mean any harm to any people eating McDonald's with greasy fingers. I'm one of those people. Every week. Who to literally find that is kind of crazy. this for me since there are no pictures of this on the entire Jeez, internet really? that we could find. <laughs> in Pokemon Black Jeez, and White 2, if guy, you do man. not collect this max potion from Route 11 and then you use your dowsing machine by this city, it will reveal that there's a <laughs> hidden item here. Really? But then the hidden item will disappear once you collect the max potion. Oh. So for this next fact, we're going to take a stroll over here and oh my god, is that a shiny Nord VPN? This video is sponsored by Nord. <laughs> I wish I had a sponsor. In the game Poke Park 2, most Pokemon Poke seem Park, to use their yes. anime voices rather than their static Pokemon cries from the usual main series. Which oh, is yeah, interesting they, they, they. when you realize Porygon Z is in this game. And for reasons we're all aware, Porygon has not yet actually appeared in the Pokemon anime. We don't talk about that stage, you know? <laughs> so if you're curious what he sounds like, here it is. And it's weird. In Pokemon... Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, I'm trying to find out why it would sound like that. I'm trying to see... The Japanese name is the same. Porygon Z. I don't see anyone pronouncing Z. I mean, any Japanese po po uh, Pokemon, Japanese people pronouncing um, Z as eh. Pokemon Go, every single type has a specific background that correlates and fits that type. But what's pretty weird is because the type of pure flying is quite rare, before Tornadus released in Pokemon Go, not a single Pokemon used the flying type wallpaper. Really? And Tornadus is still, to this day, the only Pokemon who has it. Wait, not even Pidgey? Ah, uh, okay, yeah. That is actually kind of crazy to think about. I mean, Pokemon Go has had a lot of updates and still that's the purest, I mean, purest flying type. <laughs> I mean, the only, you know, pure flying type Pokemon in there. Anyway, let's just go in. Before Generation 5, you might be aware that Self-Destruct and Explosion have an interesting way of dealing damage. Yeah, These moves have the, the defense, damage right? purposely set incorrectly. Instead of using the base power stack that can't be the fact, 50, right? as you might know, it actually halves the opponent's defense when you use this move. But what I recently found out is the reason they had to do this is yes i think i know where he's going with this one i used to study game programming and i was trying to make a pokemon game self-destruct was one of the moves i wanted to include 
I don't know if this is true or not. He might just say a proper different reason, but yeah. You know how it's 250, the base damage? Making it 500 or near 400, anywhere that, about that range. The number was too high, I think, for the systems at those times. But when it was first created anyway, so they actually needed to reduce the number. But yeah, I don't know if that is really true because I looked into so many stuff, but I do remember that was something that caught my eyes. But yeah, he might say something else, so I don't know. Let's see. Because having a move's base power written as 400 or 500 would actually take too much memory for just two moves. So this was actually done out of necessity. <laughs> Jesus! Yeah, baby! Woo! That's two. That makes it two. I need two. All oh, that you programming in university. All worth it now. <laughs> You know, I may look like this, but I do know how to program games for a couple of consoles. I specialized actually in VR. I can do a bit of that, bit of that. Most importantly, I knew this fact, baby. Actually, so happy I knew this. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> On November 14th, 2014, the day Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire released, made my day, the Pokemon man. company had an event Pokemon distribution that was available for a few months. And I bet some of you who got the game on release probably picked it up as well. Yeah, the shiny. This Pokemon, of course, being the Beldum? shiny Steven Stone's Beldum, given yeah. away through Wi Fi. But there was a detail that has to do with this Pokemon that you may have missed. If you received this Beldum sometime during your playthrough, and then complete the Delta episode, would speaking to Steven Stone, something very cool will happen. If you have Ooh, this Beldum, he will give you a secret line of dialogue where he actually references the Mega Evolution special episode of the X really? anime. This is Wait, really, really cool because it only happens if you received this Beldum. If you're just playing through the game normally, this will not happen at all. I kind of remember that anime episode. This is way off topic, but Steven Stone, I keep on getting mixed up who that is because I'm used to playing the Japanese Pokemon games and his name is Daigo in there. There is an unused track in the Pokemon Red and Green soundtrack that you're listening to a rendition of right now. This the sounds track like was intended to be a theme. victory theme in these games. The jackpot but theme when you do the roulette. The ear will have noticed Which game that was it that actually in? went on to get reused in Generation 2 as the Mount Moon Square theme. But surprisingly, that's not where this ends. If you speed up the end of battle victory theme from Pokemon Stadium 2 to two times the normal speed, you'll find the final resting place of Let's this originally go. unused theme. <laughs> oh yeah! for about six years. The theme then appeared again in the Diamond hey, and Pearl yeah, theme that plays when you so score a jackpot in the game corner. Sadly, there was no game corner oh, in Brilliant Diamond and Shining. There's a Clefairy in there too. That makes so much sense now. You know, I'm not gonna even lie. Pokemon, the amount of references they can, I mean, they do, is sure. Yes. But Clefairy, that makes so much sense now. That's crazy. Okay. Pearl, so we never got to hear it remastered. Well, that's actually not true. It doesn't even end here. The theme really? came back as recent as 2022 in Pokemon oh, Legends Arceus. So cute. As the theme that plays when you complete the event that lets you watch Clefairy's I haven't done that one moonlight. yet. I haven't even completed the game yet. So. Call back to its official origins. Pokemon is truly one of a kind when it comes to recognizing and acknowledging its lore. Exactly, its my guy. Has Easter yes, eggs from over it really years is, ago, man. And that is pretty Jeez. rad. Every single Pokemon has a number of colors that make up their design. These colors are then arranged into a palette inside the game's code. Color Each palettes. one of these colors displayed somewhere inside the in-game art of this Pokemon. But for one Pokemon, this is actually not the case. You see, when adapting many Pokemon into their sprite Jeez. versions for these games, the Spriter's references was old Generation 1 artwork. This is uh, proven yeah. in other sprites, such as how Machamp lacks its belt entirely. <laughs> That, that much. <laughs> I mean, the right one looks buff, but doesn't the left one look a bit... It looks like it needs more protein. It's a bit lanky. Just me? You look lanky, boy. 
and Nidoqueen bearing both of its fangs. Both oh, features yeah, that are only present in the initial set of artwork and the in-game sprites of Generation 3. And as the official <laughs> art developed, many of these features were retroactively changed in every future entry to the series. Wow, is that how it Which looks? brings That's us crazy. to the Venomoth oddity. When unearthing Venomoth's code in Ruby and Sapphire, there are multiple different colors of yellow in this palette that went entirely unused in the final Oh yeah, rendition. I don't see much. I mean, maybe and the This is not normal. Its palette is different because like I mentioned, the sprite team was referencing the Generation 1 art of Venomoth. And wow. when you see Venomoth's art, you can see it was incredibly different than its current design. Is that how it looked? I don't remember it having yellow spots on because I used to use Venomoth. I did not know that's how it looked like first time around. The overall tone of the Pokemon lacking its purple hue and showcasing bright yellow spots on its back that are now entirely gone from not only the Ruby and Sapphire sprite, but the entire existence of Venomoth okay. itself. Every official <laughs> art of Venomoth besides- that, That's Pokemon Garland, by the way, if you don't know what that card-looking thing is. I have a ton of those. Pokemon game day can play in the arcades in Japan here, but yeah, one of my favorite Pokemon arcade games. It's upgraded now, so they, you can't use those ones anymore. It's a new machine made, but yeah, hoo -hoo. Besides, this one does not contain these spots or this color, meaning that the process of changing Venomoth's appearance happened during <laughs> this game's <laughs> he cut the development. Grass. And the coder in charge of swapping over the palette in these games simply forgot. <laughs> really? And now the last remaining piece of history being this block of yellow hidden in the game's code that when compared to the original shows us a nearly perfect match. This guy, Blue Boy Finn, is bloody amazing, man. He does not miss a thing. I mean, he's bringing up facts that I didn't know I knew that other people don't know. And reminded me of those facts. The, the, the programming one. Jeez, uh, uh, he's crazy. The facts he dishes out is crazy. The editing and the script is all beautiful. Oh my days. I mean, <laughs> what are we talking about again? <laughs> this guy is just amazing wow that was amazing anyway is there any facts that you knew i only knew two anyway but that is all i hope you enjoyed if you did like and subscribe if you want and of course comment down below any facts or thoughts that you have on this video anyway above all that thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video see ya